My name is Steve Hansen with Suka Manufacturing Company. Welcome back to our dryer service video series. Today's topic will be how to wire contactors and overload circuits in your auxiliary box. This is a picture of a wiring diagram inside your auxiliary power box for your auxiliary load and unload system. We would ask that your electrician keep all of this wiring in this auxiliary box and not our main power box. It's simple to follow the diagram inside the door. Starting on the left, we'll have some low voltage circuits. Our 18 is our 24 volt DC circuit and the 95 is the DC common. Proceeding on, we have a circuit 49D that is factory jumpered that is our motor overload for our auxiliary box. So if you end up adding auxiliary circuit kits from us, we would ask you to continue this circuit by sending power up to an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary contact on the starter protector. And that would become a series circuit through the, the one to three contactors that you would have in there and then feed it back down to our 49D that would proceed to the PLC. Inside this box is also a user fault circuit, and that's an additional fault circuit that some people like to use. Um, they may want to tie it into uh, their leg, for instance, so the dryer could never operate without the leg running. But that's strictly an optional circuit for you to use if, if you so choose. Proceeding on, we'll have 120 volt power on circuit one and the 120 volt neutral on circuit two. <clears throat> Those are supplied from the dryer main power box. Proceeding on, we have three sets of dry contacts. The first one, five and seven, being five second delay from your load system operating. So this generally would like to be looked at as possibly an incline auger feeding the dryer. Proceeding on, on dry contacts eight and nine, this would be the second load system and it would come on five seconds after the first one and generally would be tied to the wet bin. Proceeding on to the, to the right, we would also have dry contacts on 14 and 15 and that would be for your unload system. So if you want to tie your takeaway system in, these are dry contacts that would turn on your takeaway system. Now if you buy these contactor kits from Suka Manufacturing, they will have 120 volt coils on them. So if you choose to draw that power from our 120 volt side, you would simply need to take power from circuit number one and put it to each side of the dry contacts that are proceeding. So you could jump from number one to our first one as circuit five and eight and 14. And then you would take the other side of those dry contacts to the, coil, to the coil side of each of the magnetic starters. And then just take your A2 side or your neutral back to circuit number two, which is the 120 volt neutral. If you purchase a contactor kit from Suka Manufacturing, you will need to specify the horsepower ratings for, for what is required. It will come to you with a starter protector and an auxiliary contact installed wiring down to the magnetic starter and the coil wiring. Also included in the kit will be conduit and wire to take power from our main power box distribution panel into this auxiliary box. Continuing on, you would need to install the starter protector and the contactor on the DIN rails that are in the auxiliary box. And then we need to hook up two circuits to accomplish our goals here. The first one, we'll need to use some wiring to go to the auxiliary contact, and that's gonna be used to do our motor overload circuit. So coming from the factory, that'll be circuit 49D, and we'll have a jumper wire installed in there. So what we'll need to do is remove that jumper wire, and you're gonna to need to supply our 24 volt DC power circuit 18 to one side of the auxiliary contact and then we'll need to supply have another wire supplied to return that signal back to our circuit 49D. If you add additional contactors in here you could have an additional 
load contactor and a, and a takeaway contactor. You would simply need to wire those in series with the final one returning on circuit 49D. The next thing we'll need to do is if you're using our 120 volt power to energize the coils of these, we'll need to take the neutral, which is our white wire, and put it in circuit number two. And then we'll need to supply power to one side of our dry contacts. We'll need to take power from circuit number one, which is our 120 volt power, and we'll need to supply it, in this case, to circuit five, which is one side of the dry contact. Then we'll need to take the other side of our coil power and put it into circuit number seven. That will complete that control circuit, so power would be supplied to one side of the dry contact. And then when the computer says to turn on the load system, five seconds after the load starts, that dry contact would close and send our 120 volt power to the coil of that magnetic starter, turning on your incline auger, for instance. The same thing would happen on your second load and your takeaway. You just end up using a different set of dry contacts. Circuit eight and nine are the second load auxiliary and circuit 14 and 15 are the takeaway system that would be tied to your unload system. To complete your auxiliary circuit installation, the kit will be supplied with conduit and wire to go to the top of your starter protector. And then you'll need to use a knockout in the side of the box. And then this will need to be taken into the main power box and hooked to the distribution block to provide that main power to the top of your starter protector. And then you'll need to hook up your uh, motor leads from the magnetic starter. Remember, this video and more can be found at our website, www.sukup.com, or our YouTube channel, Sukup MFG.